Is an IP address an identity? The computer that you use that's connected to the internet identifies itself using an IP address. That's how the IP protocol makes sure that data that is destined for your computer finds its way across the internet to reach your computer. But IP addresses aren't identities. It's not quite that simple. And there's a couple of reasons for this. So one reason would be, uh, let's say I'm using my computer at home and I'm, you know, I'm uh, searching the web and you know, I'm doing some stuff. When I'm using that computer, the IP address identifies my computer. So the IP address might be 4.5.6.7. And that IP address is probably assigned by an internet service provider or something. However, if I also, um, let's say I go out somewhere else on the internet, I'm not at home, and now I'm using the internet on my smartphone, and that smartphone has an IP address that's assigned by a different internet service provider, probably. Um, so maybe that is 1.2.3.4. And then when I get to work and I've got a computer over here that I use, uh, that computer address might be 10.11.12.13. So one of the challenges with using IP addresses to identify um, to sort of establish online identities is that people use multiple computers. Even if I have the same computer, so let's say this is a laptop computer, I know it looks like a desktop and I just said it was one, and let's say I take that laptop with me to work, the IP address assigned to that laptop will probably change because my uh, company and my home internet service provider are assigning IP addresses from different pools and so the IP address is going to be different. So for a laptop, uh, for a smartphone, the IP address is changing frequently depending on who assigns it. It can also change, of course, we know uh, due to DHCP, even with the same internet service provider. So one of the ways that we deal with a, a limited number of IPv4 addresses is by reassigning them to different computers, particularly if those computers are only clients on the internet and don't need an IP address that's stable so that other computers can connect to them. So IP addresses change you know, too often to really be internet identities. However, I don't want to give you the wrong idea because in most cases, the IP address of your machine can in some way be traced back to something about you that could be used to establish an identity. So for example, if you are at home on your computer and you launch some sort of attack on a website or you hack into somebody's computer and try to steal something or something like that, um, eventually you know, the government is going to come to your internet service provider and they are going to ask you know, what uh, account was associated with this particular IP address at that particular time. And they were going to find out who you are and they're going to come after you, you know, and, and try to uh, get, you know, get a hold of you uh, and hold you responsible for whatever you've done. So the uh, same thing for work. So, you know, if, if you're a worker at school, uh, the school probably keeps records of what computers were assigned various IP addresses at what periods of time. Now, you may know that your computer itself, so these computers, uh, these are IP addresses. These are used by the IP protocol. But these computers also have other types of addresses. They have something called a MAC address that's used by the Ethernet protocol. And that MAC address does not change. Typically, it can change in certain cases, but a lot of times the MAC address is hard-coded into the machine. So if I take my computer from one place to another, the IP address will change, the MAC address does not change. And so that's kind of an interesting feature because it means that <coughs> excuse me it means that there is a stable way to identify that computer however that MAC address never goes out over the internet so when you communicate with a server somewhere on the internet or you exchange data because the IP addresses are being used by the internet protocol which is the common protocol that everybody uses the MAC addresses are actually never seen by the other endpoint of the connection. Now again, the MAC address is seen by potentially the person who assigns you an IP address. And so if, if you're at school, your school may know the mapping between your IP address and the MAC address of your machine. And that may be another way that they would try to find you if you did something really damaging uh, or, or very destructive. Um, so, you know, the, the IP addresses that are used by the internet are really designed to allow computers to exchange data. They were never designed to be an identity. The fact that they change over time uh, means that they're not typically used to establish identities. Um, but in certain cases, I can start from an IP address and a timestamp and work back to some sort of information about you that I would need to identify you um, if you know you do something bad online or I'm trying to find out who you, who you are.